Metal detecting, old school versus new school. The Whites DFX versus the Mind Lab Equinox 800. Hey guys, it's Braz it's Between the Irons, and we got Randy at Randy's Treasure Adventures up here today in Denton. We're hunting the World War II field, as I like to call it. We are using a Whites DFX, and he has his Equinox 800. It is the battle of old school versus new school. And literally. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, we are going to hunt this field. I've hunted it before, so I do have a little bit of advantage of where some hot spots are. But he has the Equinox. So <laughs> we're going to be testing it and just stay tuned. I'll shoot some video of what he finds and what I find. I've already got one dime, but it's modern. And we will catch up and see what we end up with. All right, check on just a little bit. Bye bye. All right, we got Randy over at my corner where I found my half dollar. He's on his first target. He's getting used to the layout here. Uh, we'll see what he comes up with here. I am on about 100 feet away. I got a good signal here. I'm running in my relic mode, which is uh, using mix mode too. So I'm hearing all the iron. I'm running it kind of hot with the DFX. Uh, I've used his metal detector up here once. It was awesome. The Equinox 800. So we're going to separate spots of the field. And we are going head to head. So let's see what happens. I'll check in with y'all when we start digging up stuff. Bye bye. All right. So on my first target right here, I was getting a good reading on the whites. But we're gonna wait because Randy has something over here. We're gonna go see. He says he's getting a modern pity reading, but that is the exact same spot where I found that Franklin half dollar back in my other videos. We'll see what he comes up with here. Uh, again, he's using the Coil Tech 10 by five and his custom carbon fiber shaft and the equinox 800 and some apple apple earbuds for some reason yeah uh, because it works because it works <laughs> well i use this machine i like the the bluetooth on the um the ones that come with it they were great there was no latency so but they were it took me about a minute to get them connected so There's a lot of crap over here. There, like every time I set the coil down, the thing's going off. Yeah, there is quite a bit of demo in this field. It's been it, ha it housed World War II soldiers, and then after that, in the 70s, they built some low-rise apartments, tore those down, and now it's just an open field. But we have, or I have, and my father that came out here found. Ten, about 10 silver dimes a silver half dollar right in the same spot about seven inches down but in that same spot with the silver dollar using our whites xlts that are you know guys made in 1995 they just they can't separate like this and so i dug out six pieces of trash and a regular dime before i got to that half dollar but using the dc phase on my dfx i was able to see that positive 89 to get it and randy has found a key that's awesome i love keys so, so stay tuned we're gonna see what comes up next what kind of key we got uh just oh pretty old key but cool we're gonna keep going okay. my little hole right after randy found his key it's just iron there's a bunch of it out here, so we're gonna have to keep looking and really dig through this iron and get through it. We're trying to get between that iron, hence the name. So I'm gonna get you on the next good signal and not waste your time on this garbage or iron in the ground. See you in a minute. I'm getting a really choppy signal, uh, but it is flashing on my screen. I'm gonna flip you around real quick. It's hitting in the 80 every once in a while. So hold on. Okay, so I'm getting this. Uh, uh, can y'all see that? 
Okay. I got some bad shadow. So I'm in mixed mode and so and I'm running it kind of hot. I'm getting all kinds. If y'all could hear this noise, it would drive you crazy. So I'm getting a plus 73 right there if you can see that. Um uh, My shovel out of the way. I mean, the shadows are bad. I'm sorry, but I'm get within all this. It's ba it's bouncing between 85 and 80. I got it there. That's my DC phase. Um, I can't really get down in it. Uh, it said it was about two inches, but I'm running the DC hot. There's something in there. <coughs> oh, we gotta turn the pinpointer up probably a little bit. It's not, well, well, uh, got, yeah, it is, that is a silver, Randy, over there, but hold on, let me go get him and show him our first silver of the day, it is, 1964. Another one. Okay. Oh, we got the first silver of the day. Um, I gotta go show Randy. He's over there digging something, but check that out. XLT scores first. Or actually DFX. I didn't bring the XLT. Scores first, so let me go show him and get him over here, see what he sees with the mine lab. Check in a minute. I'm gonna go get my buddy. I got Randy over here showing my silver dime. It's about two inches. I'm in the trashy part. He's in the part where it gets a little softer and you can find some hey, stuff can, deeper. There's a million holes over there, too. <laughs> That's from me. Yeah. But uh, he's got the better separation. I got lucky on this one. I was bouncing between 74 and 87 and then iron all in. I heard the ding in my ear. These things, of course, you can see on my head. But got it. And we'll see what else we get. We're going over here to the mine lab. See you in a minute. He called me over, so let's see what he's got. He said 22, 23. I'm guessing maybe wheat penny. Let's see. So, like if I move that coil really anywhere away from that right there, it starts getting crap. There's a lot of trash around. Yeah, here. so y'all see I've dug a bunch with my DFX. This field is up for rebuilding on, so, yeah, sorry about that hole, but it was rainy that day um his machine definitely gets through the stuff better than mine i'm more of having to dig a lot a lot and i have a whole trunk full of pull tabs and nails and whatnot but let's see here now, I've been over this spot he's at several this times. This is going to be some of the trash, I think, yeah. first. But my, you know, XLT or DFX, they will be blinded by iron. I just saw a penny there somewhere. There it is. And what's, he's got a, well, it's, Looks like it might be a wheat. I think it could be. Yeah, it's got, he's got a green. 
guy the... more stuff so now well, he's got another signal hold on let me fix this camera zoom real quick here's part of a pull tab <laughs> it won't zoom so yes that if y'all can't see i'm sorry we'll show it at the end he did find a wheat penny but he's also digging out the trash that was in the hole with it the pull tab was right next to it and he was still yeah. getting this good signal this is why my dfx missed it because that pull tab was sitting right on top of it and the composite vdi number just would not let it register i'm Maybe trying to get this penny on there for you junk in there oops well I, didn't, I don't want to clean it and scratch it any more than all he is, but there's a weight. He's still digging. Let me get this focused. Let's see what else we get. This is the spot where I found the most coins. I mean, it's just <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Signals. It gets kind of dry when you get a little bit further down. Yeah, this is the driest it's been since I've been hunting here for months. You can either, when it's wet just a little bit, you can get down to two feet and dig up a 50 year old shovel, or you can get maybe six inches if you really try hard. There's a nail. Yeah. So he had a nail in that hole too with this penny. So we will get back with y'all. So you'll see the penny we got that out of the, the hole with the nail and the pull tab same thing happened with the silver half dollar but the dfx was able to get that half dollar down there because it was a lot more conductive object than the iron and the dime and trash that was in the hole his mind lab was able to get this penny to actually give him a good reading with a pull tab and an iron nail and a whole bunch more trash he's still digging yeah that's so, just <laughs> There it is, we got that. And we just found the dime back over where my metal detector is, somewhere over there, if y'all can see it. So, we're gonna keep going. One on the board, another one on the board. See you in a sec. Quick, I just gotta throw in, the screen on my DFX is going. It is probably gonna be gone by the end of the day. Don't keep your metal detectors just laying in the back. Make sure they're in a bag. Mine, unfortunately, gets put in the back of my car, hit a speed bump yesterday, and I've got the screen starting to go. It's the, oh, I don't know, that was old before LED displays. It's going, so I'm almost out of a metal detector. So stay tuned, and Ed, be on the lookout. I'm gonna be hitting you up. It's always good to know that your DFX will give you a pull tab silver reading at i don't know eight inches so i'm gonna go switch out to the xlt first off the screen's going on this machine it's all liney through the display it's crap i'd probably worn it ragged but look a freaking bull tab at eight inches ah here Boom. all right so stay tuned, now it's gonna be XLT versus Mind Lab Equinox 800. See you in a sec. Well guys, it's time to say goodbye to the DFX. It's pretty much done. We're going to end it with that silver dime. It had a great run. Say bye bye. Now we're gonna go follow Randy over here with the Equinox. Probably more exciting for y'all anyways. We're gonna see what he's digging. Now, Whites, I know y'all are out of business. Y'all gave a great product for many years. I've been able to use the XLT for over 20. This DFX has been amazing. I wish y'all were still in business, but gotta go to Mind Lab. Uh, let's go check out the 800 while I save up for a manicure. I wanna check it out. Mm. And it's really deep, <laughs> whatever well, it is. Randy's got a signal over here, which this side of the field hasn't been hunted much over up in this area with a little grass pad is for pitching. I did find the part to that uh, pop gun and also found uh, the presidential token back over there too. But down here has not been hunted by me. Here's the crap I was hearing right here. Here's the crap Randy was hearing with the mine lab. We do have... It looks like it's a lock. Oh, 
Actually, that's an old lock. He got an old lock, I which is pretty quit cool. probably whacking it with my shovel. Yeah. <laughs> Check that's this out. That's a really old lock. So he, I've been finding the pocket watches, and Randy just found a. That's definitely from the 40s, 50s. Yeah, Look old. at that thing. All right. Be older than that. It's hard to say. That's with the Equinox 800. And that was just a signal that I thought, you know, it was a mix, another mix. And I thought, I'll just see what it is. I figured it was going to be junk, and basically it is. But, I mean, at least it's not a pull tab or, you know, a name. Yeah. <laughs> the, the way the life of the DFX ended on a pull tab, we're going to call it it ended on the... Uh, Silver coin, though. We'll give it that. Hey, that's a good way to go that's out. That's a good right? way for the DFX to go out. But we're going to follow you around for a minute, see what you get down here. Okay. We're going, we're looking at the 800 today. He's got the custom carbon fiber and that Coil Tech 10x5, which is pretty cool. I got to use it one night. Y'all have the video you can go look up. And I will mention that actually is custom. It's Detect Ed, okay? All the components are Detect Ed. But I had the solid straight shaft for a while. Then I bought the telescoping shaft, but I'm tall. I'm like 6'4", so, um, and long arms, so the, the shaft couldn't extend out far enough before I'm pulling it out of the stand. Yeah, and I like it because it's very collapsible. It, yeah. it, it fits like in a backpack. It, so it's crazy. Part, that was the old solid one-piece upper shaft, and I cut it down and then added the other collapsible of the telescoping detect edge shaft. So, I mean, you know, I guess it's custom, it's hybrid is what it's it is. It's lightweight too, guys, so. Oh yeah, it's very lightweight. And then I also have, I'll have to unscrew these, but um, I also put the folding, now it's all oh, yeah. Look but at this that. will fold back. And, so you um, can make this thing completely compact. Yeah, so I would carry this thing in a backpack like in Arizona when I was, whenever I was getting around those old mining camps. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because my gold machine is, is not going to be suitable for hunting a mining camp. It just goes off on everything. So, but this, at least I could put some discrimination to it and then hopefully find maybe an old coin or something that someone left. Yeah, have you tried the 40 kilohertz only mode for any gold? Uh, no, no. I, whenever I um, have hunted gold with the... Equinox, I just put it in gold field, like gold. one or two. Yeah, it's still using the multi IQ or does it switch to the single frequency? It switches to like the whatever, I don't remember how high that is. It's I think really it's high. 20 and 40, something like yeah, that. So um, it leans towards that. Uh, we have so many hot rocks where we hunt that, um, I mean, even the gold machines can have trouble. So, yep. you know, it can be. It can be a chore. All right, well, so we're going to keep following Randy, see what he finds. Um, looking at the old 800, I guess now, since they came out with the 900 and the 700, but also the Mana Core, which is, I got my eye on. And again, Ed, look out for me. I'll be calling, saving up my money. But uh, we're going to see what the 800 can do because there's good deals on them on eBay right now. Check out in a minute. All right, I was going to get a drink, and then Randy called me over just immediately as I started walking away. He's saying he's getting a high tone that's jumping around a bit. Let me try to get the shadow out. Oh, uh, yeah, let me get out. There we go. All right. Um, just a little bit. Well, it's still in there. Let's see what the... Yeah. He's got his Garrett Carrot. I'm using technically a White's, which is owned by Garrett, and then a Mind Lab Pinpointer. They, Garrett hasn't produced White's machines yet. I don't know if they will, but it's odd. I use a technically Garrett company detector, and he uses a Garrett Pinpointer. Well, I'm using a Mind Lab Pinpointer, and it's just the reverse. I like the carrot up. I had the old Profine 35 back in the, I don't know, a while back. Did you have the yellow one or the black one? The yellow one. The yellow and one. I had that for a little while, and they were really so close that I ended up trading the uh, Profine. I don't remember what I traded it for, but um, I traded it. 
is a, I still use the Profine 35 here. I probably got the newer one when they fixed some problems they had with it, but I love this one. This, you can know if it's an iron object from six inches away, and it'll help you. It's really strong. The Garrett's, I've heard only great things about them, never used one. And my first pinpointer was a Profine 15, Profine 15, which I gave to my girlfriend. It just, it, it'll it beep about one inch from the target. Uh, went to Bass Pro Shops the next day and got the 35 for me, haggled a little bit and got it for 89 bucks. So if you ever, if you really, if you really wanna bug the manager when they're busy, they'll give you a discount at Bass Pro. Now he's getting some beeps. What, uh, what VDI was coming up? It was jumping from the low 20s on up into 30. So really it was, what I do usually whenever I'm hunting, like if it's for coins or whatever, is if, if the number jumps more than about, I don't know, seven points or whatever, yeah. I just keep going. But this one, even though it did jump more than seven points, it was just a high tone every time. Yeah. Same high tone. So I just thought, you know, I'm going to. What do you have your uh, iron bias on? Uh, four. Four, okay. And he said he's running his recovery between five and six. It's right now it's set on uh, five. Five. And he's got this deep. It's deep, guys. It's, that's something I cannot do with my whites. And he's using a, uh, I don't know if it's a smaller coil or not, but yeah, mine's a nine and a half inch uh, concentric coil. I think that's what they're called. I don't know, my mind just went blank. He's using the Double D 10 by five, which is really neat. They work in different ways. They come up sometime, uh, Double Ds versus elliptical coils. There's a cone versus a line that goes down to get you in between that stuff a lot better. Never bought an aftermarket for the white, so I cannot review that. Looking for, it's getting stronger there. That is nuts. Still deep. So I'm getting like 32, it may be wrap around. I mean, it's not going into the high 30s, but it'll bounce from like 32 all the way to two. So, huh. you know, now that could be that there's iron mixed in there with it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think it's a silver coin with iron mixed in with it. That would be nice. You get, yeah, it's strong right there. Yeah. Let's see if we can see in the hole. This thing is deep, guys, if y'all can see. There's my there. pinpointer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, we might end up here with some kind of pipe. Uh, there was a water line possibly through here. Possible. But we are hoping it's something better. He's getting down to China in the... <laughs> well, uh, after all that, guys, we found a cap. Some kind of a cap. Yeah. But <sighs> stay tuned. That's how deep the mine lab gets. I don't know what this, if it would have picked up with my DFX or not. But uh, we'll find some more good stuff. We're probably going to go to another place here that hasn't been hunted as much as this one. As you all can see behind me, this whole field has been searched a ton by me. My dad, another guy, I can't remember his name, but he was used as a Garrett Max in coin mode. So that's why I still come here um, and use relic mode to try to get some stuff he's missed. Old timer, real, I can't remember his name. He gave me his card. I'll try to find it later, but stay tuned. See y'all in a bit. Back at the car, I wanted to update you and we will show you at the end that we Penny and Randy found a minute ago. We got the date, it's 1940. And no mint mark, so Philadelphia, I'm guessing. Uh, but we'll show you all our stuff at the end. I am getting a drink and switching out to the XLT. Let's see what happens.
me and Randy just jumped over a fence. It's my buddy's house, and they have... This is the house that used to be the president of UNT in the 30s. I found a Mercury Dime here about five months ago. He's been redoing his backyard, so it's the field, soccer field's right behind that. We walked through the gate, and he has taken the top layer off for us, so we are going after the silver. We know there's some here. Be back soon. All right, I'm getting my first good signal. And it's pinpointing small too, right here. Let's dig and find out and see what we got. Well, I'm thinking this was the spot. I had to put the detector down. Uh, pinpointer out guys this was ringing and right at the dime wheat penny range maybe silver well I got something big no not big but what the hell I don't want to touch with that but okay there's something right here oh no yeah, no yeah. It is, it was a penny. All right, so copper penny, um, nothing too special. Let me see if, what date we're working with. 19, 1964 penny. So we're at least in the silver range in this field. Randy's working the uh, west corner of the field. I'm over here just dead middle. Still trying to squeeze a little bit of life out of this. Two seconds in though, 1964. So we know we're in silver because I found silver here and of the date on this penny. And they've just freshly scraped this off. So let's, uh, half of an old toy car. <laughs> and he's found a toy car. We'll check that out at the end of the video. So we're good to go. We're finding all kinds of stuff. This is new, fresh, never been hunted. We're back in the field. We didn't find much at Kevin's house. It's a little clustered up, but uh, I just pulled a, another 1940 wheat penny. I'll flip it around to show you better. Randy pulled a quarter out just over here. It wasn't old, but we're on a side of the field that hasn't been hunted much. Let me flip this camera around. You guys, you're not gonna believe this. I'm gonna show you what Randy just found. On my field, I've been here 30 times. Now I've found one before, but it wasn't this old. Get ready to look. Hey guys, it's Brazos between the irons. I brought my buddy Randy up to hunt the World War II field today with me and look what he has just pulled out of the ground. If y'all can see that, it's a 1944 Walking Liberty Half Dollar. Stay tuned for more. that was the hole he found it in and we're going he's going to continue down the fence line i'm going to go to his side over here because we've got a lot of ground to cover and this is a big field like i said i've been here 30 times and just i've probably swept over that hole before just the difference in the machine or what program i was running that day who knows i could have been too far out because of that chain link fence and just decided to be one inch over and didn't hit that spot so always i mean your fields never hunted out we're gonna keep going so i'm looking for a half dollar day too bye bye <laughs> well randy's got another signal on the fence line over here i think it fell further down in the hole but i think he, it's a penny he thinks it's a penny so let's see Good thing about that coil, it's not picking up the chain link fence as much as a, that looped concentric coil that the Whites has. The double D focuses more in a straight line down in the ground type pattern. Uh, I can hear it. Oh, that's your... Yeah, the, every time I get the... The show. Oh, there it is. But there we go. Be right in there. What number was it reading? Oh, like 22. So 22. that's why I'm saying it's probably a penny. 
any or a piece of uh, broken up something. Well, <laughs> that's too bad. We'll keep you posted, guys. Hold on. Now I still got something else. Hold on. Let me that in the pouch. See what this is. Oh, well, there's a circle thing. A nail. A Oops. nail. Yeah, a nail. All right. Well, that's the trash right after the walk in the Stay tuned. The trash. Well, guys, I thought I had found a half dollar. I have my machine running hot, so the VDI scale has got it. Well, now it's saying 83, but it was 85. I pulled this out of the ground. It's a 1970 quarter. Oh, nothing like the half dollar Randy just found. He's over here trying to get ahead of me now, so I got to keep up. I'll see y'all back shortly. That's the next find. Uh, I would say the Equinox is ahead by now. All right, so we decided to switch it up a bit and come to another field. This one's a little small. Uh, right off the bat, tried to use the XLT. Um, wasn't really having it. Just using the DFX until it's completely done. Actually pulled a nickel with the XLT. It's 1980, nothing special, but I don't find a lot of nickels. And then I pulled another wheat penny out here. I keep dropping it, but we are gonna hunt. Let me flip you around real quick. We still got Randy over there using his Equinox, and we're hunting this small little pasture where we've pulled out some wheat pennies and a pocket watch. So when he finds something, I'll show you, and then I'll keep you going along when I keep finding stuff. So. This will be the last place we go today. Once we are done with our hunt, we'll gather everything up and show you at the end. That half dollar he found was so amazing, guys. So just get ready. We'll show it a little bit better here shortly. All right, I found it. Sorry for the noise in the background of the cars, but I did find a car. This was ringing hard, 82, 82, 82. It's a number 61 matchbox i don't know who that is but that is cool i love toy cars and it's in perfect shape look at that oh man all right i'm gonna get back to it randy's still over there but look at my car oh down the street that'd be fast wouldn't it stay tuned to see what else is coming up we're having a great day it's really fun out here it got windy if you can't tell but um Half dollars, toy cars, silver dimes, wheat pennies, crazy, old, old stuff. So we're having a blast, it's getting a little late, so I'm gonna wrap this up and get going. Okay, we are getting a solid 83, 83, 84. It is coming in at positive 85, six inches. So it's hitting hard, square on my headphones. So. Let me dig this up and I'll show you what I come up with. Right down in this hole. Okay, so far it is a 1981 quarter, but I was getting more than one signal down in here. Uh, there's something else down in here as well. So let me get to digging and we'll see if we pull up uh, anything else. I think down the quarter, at least the dime's down there. I got a silver ring, so. Uh, I'm going to be checked some more. Be right back. Randy here just showed me what he has found. And look at this, guys. We're about to do the wrap-up of the hunt for today. And look at that. That is amazing. And it's, uh, it's uh, E. Pluribus Unum, I believe. That is a place where it's screw in. But that is cool. No doubt. And he's still looking. He's, on, he's a man on a mission for some coins. Just cannot help it. Well, he said he's got a high tone here, so he's looking. Let's see what he comes up with. We're, we're both wrapping up for the day. This field, I've found the other nickels, dimes, quarters, uh, wheat, penny. Um, no silver at this field today. The only silver was back at our original field we started at. Uh, 
one dime with the DFX and one Liberty Walking Liberty half dollar with the Equinox. The, the Walking Liberty was right next to that chain link fence, and I probably walked over it a hundred times. What do you got? Price. <laughs> well, he's got a mason jar lid or something. Uh, I think it's a fitting for uh, oh. drain pipe. Well, he's got some chrome plated something or another. Alrighty. Well, we're going to do the wrap up and show you all we found and see what the results are. Talk to you in a minute. Alright, so Brazos. Well, here we are wrapping up our old school versus new school. The Whites XLT slash DFX versus the Equinox. Here is what the Whites found today at three different places. We've got starting with the Silver Dime, 64, some quarters, three, four wee pennies, uh, older nickel. This is my favorite find I found, Toy Car Voice. And some trash. And so we found coins. We found junk. I spent a lot more time filming than digging. And so here's the Equinox for the day. He has, Randy has his airplane. This is one of the coolest things ever. His coins separated. He did find some quarters. Found a lot more pennies. Forgot. And this find of the day, the Walking Liberty half. So if you look, Randy dig did hunt about twice as much as me. I was more or less filming and watching Randy hunt. He did end up with the key. He avoided some of the lower mid-tones, but he came out great. This half dollar he found here was near a fence that I never would have found with my white concentric coil due to the fence being right there on it but you see 1944 he does have then you know this cool little design this airplane which uh, definitely getting bartered for some cool other stuff um, this old lock now that all came from the equinox and he's getting stuff deep this all came from a white's dfx and to wrap that up guys uh that's the old school versus new school I think if you don't want to spend a lot of money and you still want to find stuff for whites on eBay for a hundred bucks or so, we'll do the trick. You'll still find it if you are avid and you want to spend some money and you know you need a machine that's going to perform day in, day out and not have to mess with settings all day long. The, the Mind Lab is the way to go. He turned it on into Park One and yep. just went. Uh, mine, I'm having to fumble around with the settings all day. Half the day is messing with the sensitivity, AC, DC, my swing speed, my recovery speed. The Equinox is way more powerful, just separation wise, and you can turn it on and get stuff found. And I mean, just look. <laughs> You got my stuff versus his, and I knew that field very well. He came in and just busted it. I mean, look at that. <laughs> look at it. It's great. All right, so Between the Irons, Brazos, and this is Randy at Randy's Treasure Adventure. Talk to y'all soon. Have a good night. Take it easy.